everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm gonna to be doing something a little bit different. I read these three books between February and March, and I'm so proud of myself to be able to get through three books in a month. I was so happy, and I really wanted to take the time and do like a three book review. I've never done one of these before. I usually will just talk about the insert of the book, and every now and then when I do an unboxing, when I've read the book, I will go more in depth in that unboxing, but I never really talk about my thoughts after I've actually finished the book. And so I thought I would share that today. I've never really done a review before, so if I do a book review wrong, I'm so sorry. Also, if you want to read these and you're worried about spoilers, I don't know, you may not want to watch it all the way through because I mean, I really don't like giving spoilers, but I do want to be able to give a review of the complete book. I liked all three of these books. And they all kind of had a different theme or genre to them. This one, Eventide, was a young adult book. And I think it's more in the horror genre, but really, I honestly don't know because it is a spooky, creepy type book. But there's also the journey of the character that's in it. So I really don't know what it would be classified. This one, The Roughest Draft, you will have already seen this one from Once Upon a Book Club. I can't remember which one this came out of. I think this was Unplugged Book Box. It was so long ago, I think 2020. I don't even remember which book box I got it in. Anyways, this one, The Roughest Draft, this is more romance type book. And it was so good. I read it so quickly. I guess apparently I think romance type books are gonna be probably my second favorite genre after mystery thrillers. And then this one, Circus of Wonders, is another one that came out of Once Upon a Book Club. And I did go into quite a lot of detail during the Once Upon a Book Club unboxing, so I'm not gonna go too much into it today. I just wanna give you my overall thoughts for it for after I have finished it. And Circus of Wonders, I know it's an adult book, but I don't know what kind of genre it would fall under. It's more like a journey. Is that even a genre? I don't even know what genre it'd go under. Like, really, I don't because it's not really a romance book, even though there's some romance in it. And it's not really, I don't know, you're really following three different characters, but really you're following the main character and then on her journey. Let me go ahead and start with Circus of Wonders because that's the one that I read first. And it is by Elizabeth McNeil. I think this may have been her debut novel. Okay, no, her debut novel was The Doll Factory. The Doll Factory sounds really interesting. For those who have not seen the unboxings for these or the one especially that was forever ago, I'm gonna go ahead and reread the insert and I'm just gonna give a quick review on this one. I'll have timestamps in this video, so if you just recently heard me talk about this book, you can skip past it and move on to the other ones that you wanna learn about. But if you wanna relearn about it or rehear about this book, then please feel free to continue watching. An addictive novel about power, fame, and love that is threatened by a terrible secret. Step up, step up in 1860s England, circus mania is sweeping the nation. Crowds jostle for a glimpse of the lion tamers, the dazzling trapeze artists, the most thrilling of all, the so-called human wonders. When Jasper Jupiter's Circus of Wonders pitches his tent in a more coastal town, the life of one young girl changes forever. Sold to the ring master as a leopard girl because of her birthmarks that cover her body, Nell is utterly devastated but as she grows close to the other performers, she finds herself enchanted by the astonishing freedom of the circus and by her own role of the queen of the moon and stars. Nell's fortune very quickly begins to glitter and with it, a chance for Jasper to realize his dreams of world renown but what happens when her fame eclipses his, when even Jasper's loyal brother, Toby, becomes captivated by Nell, no longer the quiet flower picker, Nell knows her own place in the world and she will fight for it. A gorgeously wrought exploration of celebrity power and belonging, this is a historical novel unlike any other with an unforgettable heroine at its heart. It could be almost historical fiction. I know that she did a lot of research about this book and she didn't really want to talk about a specific story of someone actually in history because she didn't want to tell someone else's story. Those are their stories. So she created a 
fictional character and kind of had the idea of what would her experiences in life be like, you know, if she was living with spots all over her in that time period when circus was booming and all of that. The book is told in three different first person perspectives, which I really liked the way that it was written because you have Nell, who is the quote unquote leopard girl or queen of the moon and stars. And then you have Jasper, who's Jasper's Jupiter Circus of Wonders. And then you have his brother, Toby, who is the other third first person that you kind of hear about. It's also divided up into parts, but I liked the way that the first person perspectives shifted, but then it still kept moving forward. So I think in one transition, she was walking up towards Toby or to Toby's, what are those things called? Like the camper, his like sleep area. Cause you know, circuses are always on the go. And then when Nell actually gets there, it'll switch to Toby's point of view, but Nell is still there. Uh, I don't know if I explained that very well, but I did like it, okay? I liked the three person point of view and kind of how it alternates. It really gave you a good look into Toby's thoughts and feelings and his background, Jasper's thoughts and feelings and his background, their brotherly bond and how different the two brothers are. And then you got to have Nell's thoughts and feelings, her journey. I believe the book does start with her. She's just a flower picker. It kind of goes over her background and then it moves into all three of them once the circus comes to her little town. It is different and instead of having numbered chapters, the chapter would just say whose point of view it is at the top. There was a couple of things that I really maybe didn't prefer or things that maybe bothered me about the book is that the story alluded to something happening between Toby and Jasper's past that happened a long time ago. Well, I don't know how long ago. It happened happened before Jasper and Toby had started this circus. And it was this mystery of what Toby did or may have done and what Jasper saw to Jasper's soldier friend, Dash. I didn't like that it basically took till the very end of the book to find out what actually happened. It alluded to some things that happened, but you didn't actually get the answer until the very end of the book. And once I was already like a little more than halfway, I was just annoyed at that point. I really wanted to know what happened. There was some points in the flashbacks where I would skim through them instead of reading them all together because I was just skimming to see if they were going to finally talk about what had happened. And it kind of drug out all the way to the end. And I didn't like that part of it. At the end of it, when you get the answer, I don't know how I'm left feeling about it. I understand what happened to the brothers before the circus, how it would have impacted their relationship and Toby's personality and other flashbacks when it flashed back to their kid lives, like to when they were boys, talking about how they saw the world differently. It kept referencing kind of the same things over and over again, almost a little too much. And then the end of the book, I was a little disappointed with the end of it, not because it didn't end like in the happiest ending ever, because some characters did get happy endings. And I'm okay if you want to end a book and it's not like happily ever after or that, but I have just found in some of the books that I've read that they just end in weird spots. And it kind of makes me reflect and go, why did the author decide to end the book here? I did like seeing how some of the characters, their stories ended. I just wish that there was a little bit more, like she had written a little bit more in the epilogue. But overall, I still think it was a great book and a great read. Anyone who likes circus themed books or movies, I think that you would probably really enjoy it. Next, The Roughest Draft. This is actually written by co-authors, Emily Wibberly and August Sigmund Brooka. I don't know if it's a husband and wife or if it's just a male and a female. Oh yeah, they met and fell in love in high school. So they're now married, they live in LA. I guess they continue to take daily inspiration from their own love story, which that's cute. But The Rough Draft was a really good book. It's about writers. This is a storyline that I guess I can relate to. I do hope to be able to write my own book one day. I've kind of always talked about it. And part of my reasoning for getting all these book boxes that I review is to help me be a better writer on how I'm gonna to wanna to write my book. And I've loved seeing 
the different first person points of view and how you can have more than one. I never even considered something like that before I started reading some of these books and I'm like, whoa, I mean like you can do that? <laughs> I like stories, I guess more like when you see them on TV where you have multiple people's point of view and their thoughts and feelings. So this one would alternate between Nathan and Katrina. And let me go ahead and read the back for you. Three years ago, Katrina Freeling and Nathan Van Heusen were the brightest literary stars on the horizon. Their co-written book topping bestseller lists but on the heels of their greatest success, they ended their partnership on bad terms for reasons neither would divulge to the public. They haven't spoken since and never planned to, except they have one final book due on contract. Facing a crossroads in their personal and professional lives, they're forced to reunite. The last thing they ever thought they'd do again is hole up in the tiny Florida town where they wrote their previous book, trying to finish a new manuscript quickly and painlessly. Working through the reasons they've hated each other for the past three years isn't easy, especially not while writing a romantic novel. While passion and prose push them closer together in the Florida heat, Katrina and Nathan will learn that relationships like writing sometimes take a few rough drafts before they get it right. It's really a good book. I wasn't planning on reading this entire book which you've probably already seen my Once Upon a Book Club unboxing of this. But when I heard the genre and that it was about writing, I was like, no, I have to read this. Like I almost always just read books that are mystery thriller. I wanted to read another genre that I liked. And I'm so glad I did. Once I started reading it, I read through it so fast. I mean, I think I got through this book in less than a week. It was so good. I do think it was my favorite of the three books that I've read so far. I would say it's your classic romantic type book. This book also alluded to something that happened in the past, like the three years, about what split them up three years ago, but it didn't take all the way at the end to find out exactly what happened. You kind of really had a feel for what happened in the middle of the book and then a little bit after that you've really kind of got your answer as to what happened you didn't have to wait all the way to the end and i really appreciated that it did end up being a conflict that i didn't expect i thought it was going to be something else and it turns out that wasn't it so that was a nice surprise i thought that they did a really good job with the storyline and the characters and how the characters were feeling and how they worked together I really thought it was a well put together book. I think the only thing that I thought was weird was right here on chapter 62. When you were going back and forth between Katrina and Nathan, a lot of times it would be present day, but every now and then it would flash back to when they had that occurrence that caused them to, you know, like end their partnership and split and go separate ways. But at the very end of the book, like chapter 62, they decided to throw in this six years earlier flashback and pretty much the entire book was wrapped up by then. And I really thought that it was a weird placement for it. I felt like it probably should have been somewhere in the middle of the book compared to at the very end of the book. I kind of get an understanding as to why they wanted to put that six year flashback in there. But again, I felt like it was in a strange place because not long after this one, it's one more chapter and then it's the epilogue. And it was just a really strange place to put it. I felt like it was in the wrong place. I don't know that I would have put it there had I wrote this book. <laughs> but what do I know? I haven't written any books. Plus I haven't edited any books. I don't even know if it was like an editor's decision or what, but I just felt like it belonged more in the middle, especially when they were still trying to explain what happened three years prior. It would have been a nice time to throw it in before they really gave that resolution to kind of more allude to what it was going to be. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm stumbling through these reviews because I've never done them before. You'll have to let me know how I'm doing. Am I giving away too much? Am I not talking about the right things? I don't know. I did like how this book ended. I liked the last chapter and I liked the epilogue that they did. I think it ended on a good note. I wish they would have shown more about what happened, like the process of them releasing the book and kind of what you have to go through with the interviews and all of that. I felt like that would have been an interesting thing to read. So if you ever think about doing another story with these two characters, I'd love to read it. Anyways, you love romance type books. 
this is a good one to read. <laughs> I could totally see it being turned into a movie. Like I think it would make a cute movie. Before I blabber on for another 12 minutes, let me go ahead and talk about Eventide. This book gave me some chills. If you watch my vlog channel, I recently posted where I was kind of talking about me reading this book and like the chills that it was giving me. And I think I used to call it Eventide, but it's Eventide. Family secrets never stay buried. A pitch perfect historical ghost story. Creepy and beautiful and equal measure. And this is by Sarah Goodman. I believe this was her debut novel and I thought she did a really good job with it. Okay, let me read the insert for you. Wheeler, Arkansas, 1907. When their father descends into madness after the death of their mother, Verity Pruitt and her little sister Lila find themselves on an orphan train to rural Arkansas. And Wheeler, 11-year-old Lila, is quickly adopted, but 17-year-old Verity is not. Desperate to stay close to her sister, Verity indentures herself as a farmhand. But even charming farm boy Abel actually can't completely distract her from the sense that something is not quite right in this little town. Strange local superstitions abound, especially about the eerie old well at the center of the forest. The wood plays tricks unleashing heavy fog and bone chilling cold, and sometimes visions of things that aren't there. But for Verity, perhaps most unsettling of all is the revelation that her own parents have a scandalous history in this very town. And as she tries to unearth the past, sinister secrets come with it, secrets that someone will go to violent lengths to protect. Eventide is a haunting tale of a long buried secret, small town scandal, and single-minded vengeance by talented debut novelist Sarah Goodman. Between Sunset and Night Comes, there's Eventide. This book was really good. I really liked it too. I think it might have been my second favorite of the three. It is young adult, and as far as I know about young adult, you're basically the main character is gonna be around 17 years old. So she's gonna be a young adult. And so it follows her storyline. This one is written in first person only, so there is no alternating first person points of view, but it was still very well written. It's in Verity's perspective, and it took a little bit of time before you actually got to the more spookier parts, which makes sense because you're having to build up to it. You're having to go over the background of the girls, kind of why they're on this train, and then them getting set up in this town, and as Verity is finding out things about this town, that's kind of when some of the spooky stuff comes in. And like there's these woods that are in the town that have this mysterious fog. And Verity went into the woods one time because a horse like kicked her off and got spooked because of the woods and ran off. And she was gonna try to go around the long way because she was instructed more than once never to go into the woods. But she thought, well, that's crazy. She has more of like a scientific type mind. She wanted to grow up and be a doctor like her dad. And she was like, that's like, there's gotta be a reasonable explanation as to why everybody's so afraid of these woods. Like surely there's nothing actually in here. But she goes to these woods and then as she's getting deeper into the woods, it gets colder and colder colder and colder. Yeah, she has her first encounter in there. And then she ends up going back into the woods another time. I believe she's chasing someone at that point and has more experiences in the woods. It was, it really was kind of bone chilling. I mean, like my little hairs on my arms were sticking up when I was reading some of those parts. And I was like, whoa, I've never read a book in this genre before. I've seen movies in this genre, but I've never really read a book in this genre. And it was really good. I liked it. I thought it was really good. And there was this one part in the book, I wanna say it may have been about halfway through, maybe a little bit more than halfway through, when she's having a conversation with someone and everything is really polite, starting off really well, and then like this character turns on her. You can just like see it in your mind, like maybe like eyes popping out, tone of voice changing. This character went from being an outstanding citizen, role model citizen to like crazy, like in your face nuts. And ooh, like that gave me chills too. <laughs> oh, I did like her explanation of why the woods, well, her explanation of what they thought happens in those woods. I don't know if it ever really went into detail as to how those woods came to be. Oh, actually, it, it may have. I did like her explanations for it. I think it really worked well with the times because you had people in those days who were considered, you know, people who work with herbs. And, but I do feel like it was very well explained, at least in my opinion. And I was happy with the way that the book 
ends. I like the way it ended. And again, the epilogue was an interesting choice for them to choose. And you just never know about these epilogues, man. Sometimes they're just strange choices. It did kind of give you a look into what was going on in their lives a few months after everything kind of wrapped up into the book. And it looked like everything was going to be going well, but I may have even liked to see a year after everything had happened, maybe even a couple of years after everything had happened to kind of see how they were then instead of just a couple of months after, but I still thought it was a pretty good way to end the book and to end the epilogue. I definitely recommend it if wanting to read something spooky or creepy, and I read this kind of just by chance, by accident. I had finished this book quickly and I still had to go to work the next day. I have time sometimes to read books when I'm substituting. It really depends on what grade I am doing. Like yesterday, I went into work and my only job was to be the hall monitor. One of the grades was doing interim testing, so you're not allowed to have more than one boy or girl go in the bathroom at a time so they're not talking about the test. You know, they give me a desk to sit at and I just have to sit out in the hall for hours and they're just like, bring a book because there's not gonna be anything for you to do when there's no one trying to go to the bathroom. So there are times when I'm substituting when I can take a book and I was gonna be subbing the next day. I had just finished this one and I just ran in my library, like on my bookshelves and I just grabbed a random book that I had remembered liking the insert for and started reading it, and then I read that one fast. So now it's time to pick up some more books. Anyways, I hope you liked my book reviews. If you thought they were boring, I'm sorry. This is something new for me. Hopefully it helped you get a good feel for these three different books. Let me know in the comments which one you would choose to read first if you were choosing one of these three books and kind of how you felt about my reviews. You know, any tips that you have, it'll help me maybe do better on more book reviews in the future if that's something you're interested in seeing. Please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below, and I'll be back tomorrow with more videos. Bye!